Recently, I was interviewed by Alicia Renee Roberts. She excludes now virtual talks. She's a personal coach, blogger, and also an author. If you need a personal coach, I will have her information in my description box below. I just want to share the interview with you. It would be great for a Christian wife or a Christian single woman that wants to prepare herself to become a wife. What I like about the interview is that I'm not the only one giving some tips. She also shares some great advice as well throughout the interview. So today I'm going to be sharing part one and make sure you stay tuned for part two. Hello everyone and welcome to the She Exudes Now virtual talks. I am your host Alicia Renee and I am a inspirational author. I am a certified life coach specializing in confidence and empowerment for women and I am the founder of The Confident Lily. So the She Exudes Now platform is all about uh, my devotional She Exudes Now. And the purpose is for us to encourage and inspire women to be the best that they can be on a daily basis. So we cover a variety of topics um, that are practical and we also want to inspire them to have more faith as well. So tonight we have a great topic. We are going to be talking about the keys to having a successful marriage. So it is happy wife, happy life. So I'm sure you have heard that term before, but we're looking forward to going deeper and exploring exactly what that means. So I have a wonderful guest today that I am going to bring to the uh, podium here so that she can introduce herself. We have Miss Florence White. Florence, mm -hmm. hello. Hi. Thank you so much for being a part of the She Exudes Now virtual talk. And before we get started, I'd like to ask all of my guests, what are you exuding today? So I know for me, I'm exuding a couple different things. <laughs> <laughs> I am exuding, first of all, some resilience because I've just been kind of pushing through and just, you know, believing that God will kind of make some ways and having that tough skin to kind of continue to move through even when I don't want to. Um, but I am just happy and I'm probably oozing with ex uh, resilience right now because I just feel like I'm going to get there. So a way is going to be made somehow. Mm -hmm. What about you? I would say today my thing is courage because of me being that I'm very introverted and I was very shy as well. And one of my fears were public speaking. Mm -hmm. So every time that um, I get ready to be interviewed by someone or do anything that has to do with the public, I have to have courage to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful that God has given me that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's funny that you say that because you have an <laughs> online ministry. <laughs> So with that, you are broadcasting to all. And so you do have that courage. Sometimes we just have to step out and claim it and just True. work, just, you know, act in it. And God just always blesses. So I Amen. know that you are going to be phenomenal because um, you've already done great things. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. So introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your your background, um, what you do, and also um, about your marriage. Uh, we want to hear, you know, how long have you been married and all the good stuff that you'd like to share with us. I guess you would call me a church girl because I was raised in church. My mom started pastoring when I was one years old. So being in church was kind of like college for me because at that time I didn't realize as a child that God was preparing me for my future, but now I understand it more now than ever before is he was, he was actually preparing me. So I'm thankful for that experience. And I've been married for 30 years. My husband is a pastor. Now he started pastoring six months after we became married. 
And it was one of those things to where it wasn't planned. We never talked about it. And it was something that either one of us didn't desire. And at first, you know, it was like, I was a little scared about it, but I would say what helped me the most is my background. And just thinking about the different experience and the things that I learned about church and church people, and certain things you should do, certain things you shouldn't do in ministry. So that helped me out a lot. And I would say that gave me an upper hand, but it was a little overwhelming for me too, because uh, when my husband and I got married, I was, uh, I think I was like eight months pregnant. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, yes, <laughs> I was eight months pregnant. <laughs> and um, also my husband had been married before, so mm. I was a stepmom. Mm. So I can say that um, one of the main things that I learned from those days is that I learned how to trust God and how to pray a lot because I mm -hmm. needed it. You know, I needed God's strength and I would pray about, you know, how to be a good stepmom, how to be a good parent, how mm -hmm. to be a good wife, how to be a good pastor's wife. All of those things I prayed to God about a lot. And I can say I'm thankful for that experience because it did bring me closer to God. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple years ago though, I, I felt like a strong desire and I felt that God was calling me into something different besides having my husband out in the church. Mm -hmm. And at, at first I thought that it was more like a change in my career move. You know, that's, you know, that's really what it was about, but it wasn't that God was calling me into ministry mm -hmm. for, he wanted me to create something for Christian women. Mm -hmm. And that's why I started my YouTube channel three and a half years ago. It was called Chats with Flo. Okay. And the purpose of me starting that channel is because that um, one thing I noticed about being brought up in the smaller churches is, is that we learn how to worship God and how to draw near to God. But then I noticed as a child that a lot of the Christian women, they were lacking in their roles of being a wife or being a mm -hmm. mom because they were so spiritual. And one thing I learned about God is that he wants us to give him his time, but he also wants us to take care of all of our roles. And he wants us to live a balanced life. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that I try to teach women is to focus on your husband, focus on your children, you know, try to make your home a pleasant place, mm -hmm. you know? And I would say, and not only that is to focus on becoming a better individual, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause I understand we're not Wonder Woman or anything, but it's just that God cares about everything and he's concerned about our personal lives mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, that is great. I love how you talked about balance, teaching balance. Um, and that's um, a whole uh, another discussion <laughs> in <Yes>. itself. <laughs> but you do have to have that balance, not only for the task and the duties that you have to re uh, fulfill every day, but mm -hmm. also the balance in knowing um, how to treat others and how to serve others, but yes. then making some time to serve yourself as well. Yes. And so sometimes I feel that, you know, women, um, just the nature of women, we're caretakers. We want yes. to help. Uh, we've been raised um, in environments where we have been instructed that this is what we need to do. This is how we uh, make sure that our home is beautiful and that our family is taken care of. And while we don't mind doing it, sometimes it can become a little overwhelming and you can you know wake up one day and look in the mirror like oh my gosh you know, i'm just a hot mess uh, so <laughs> i need to take some time to really get myself together mm -hmm. and unfortunately sometimes um, we as women we um we lose ourselves a little bit yeah not just in marriage um mm -hmm. but in serving others sometimes Mm -hmm. or you know doing all the things of life whether you're working outside the home you're raising children you're going to school whatever it is um, in church ministries or fulfilling other um, roles sometimes we get a little lost and consumed and we have to kind of step back and reevaluate things everything you said is so true i totally agree with it and that's why i can say when i got into self-care a couple of years ago, it was a life changer for me mm. because it gave me time to evaluate my personal self 
-hmm. and things that I needed to change about myself and grow in. And even when it comes to uh, low self-esteem and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And I would have never have found my place if I wouldn't have evaluated myself. That, that's important and that's key. <laughs> Yep. So that actually leads to my first question. Okay. So we talked about the happy wife, happy life, that mm -hmm. phrase. And um, we asked the question on Instagram already, you know, is there any relevance to that? Um, is it true? You know, does the wife have to be happy and therefore the husband can be happy, the household can be happy? Or is it false? You know, we're, um, can you talk to us a little bit more about the truth behind it? Sure. I mean, it's like I agree with it, but then I also disagree just a little only because that I do know that in order for the household to be balanced, the wife has to be happy. But in order for the marriage and even for the children, if you have children to be happy as well, the wife is going to have to be well balanced and she's going to have to be able to figure out a way to bring happiness for them. Mm -hmm. And I learned personally, it's like from being a mom and also from being a wife is that what helped my marriage and what helped me to become a good mom was that I tried to please my children. I tried to please my husband and I noticed the more I tried to please him, he started trying to please me in the same way, even with my children. Mm -hmm. I respect my kids and I never spanked them. I didn't holler at them. And they gave me the utmost respect, even my stepchildren. Mm -hmm. And so what I learned in order to be happy and to get what I want, I had to learn to treat them the way that I wanted to be treated. And they mm -hmm. gave me back that same respect, mm -hmm. things that I needed from them. Okay, great. Now, when you talk about your husband and him giving you that same respect back, mm -hmm. um, were there any moments where you felt like you were kind of catering to him and he may have been wanting you to do less? Because I know that happens sometimes. Um, sometimes the, our mate may feel like, oh, you're kind of doing too much or why don't you take some time to yourself? But we are so focused on catering that we just can't see that. Um, so I'm kind of wondering, I guess, did he ever offer up any suggestions for you to take some time for yourself? That's one thing I can say what I love about my husband is that he's not the average man to bear like, even when it comes to house duties and things like that, he helped clean the house, he helped cook. When my children, when uh, they were young, I mean, he, he would babysit and things like that. And so, and one thing I can say about him is like, I never really had to worry about, about over giving because with him, yes, he would always step in and say, now you done done enough. So what's going on with us, even now, he tell me that, okay, you don't have to do this. And I tell him I want to do this. Mm -hmm. And and the reason what make me want to serve him and what make him want to serve me is because we have learned how to serve each other. So mm -hmm. once you learn how to serve each other, then it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's one key um, advice that I've heard um, through uh, premarital counseling and mm -hmm. other um, ministers say as well, is that, you know, it's about serving each other. So yeah. finding out what the other person's need is and yes. being able to deliver that. And when you're focused on that, then it's a give and take. Um, so it's not just that one person is always happy and receiving, um, but both are. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, like we talked about balance, that's, yes. that's very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's get on to our next question then. Um, so let's talk about before we even would approach marriage. So maybe this is the single woman or the woman that's engaged. Is there anything that she should do beforehand to kind of prep herself um, for preparing for the marriage and preparing to be um, this strong vessel for her husband? Yes, if I was talking to a single lady, one thing that I would tell her is um, that first you want to learn how to submit to God. You know, because it's going to be so hard when you get married to be a submissive wife if you're not able to submit to God and submit to his will. Mm -hmm. And and just by doing that, that actually help 
prepare you to become a wife. And I will even say, because it's good to have a, a strong relationship with God, because whether you're married or single, you are going to need him. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you're going to have to lean on him, even when there may be times where you just feel like you can't make it. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have to allow God to be your strength. So one of the main things I will tell a single lady is um, to submit to God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. That, you know, I don't think that needs any further explanation because once you submit to God, who is our everything, then there is nothing that you won't be able to do. And you've already learned the act of submission. Um, So that's something that you should practice daily anyway, regardless of the relationship that you're in. So I love that. Yeah. Both parties should submit first to, to God. I love that. So is there any value in the woman knowing her own identity, maybe having her own purpose and mission in life? You know, sometimes we may have a hobby or like you, um, we have a ministry, we have a business, something that we're doing. Um, You're online doing YouTube and I'm doing all the things. (laughs) So is there any value in the woman having something um, to hold on to before she gets married? Oh, definitely. I think that's a game changer because it's like what I notice about a lot of women and even myself, when you like haven't found your place in the world, it's hard for you to be truly happy. And I do know now that you can find that happiness while you are single and it's so beautiful when you find it while you're single. Mm -hmm. And so, because even with myself, I noticed like when I got married, I kind of lost myself and I focused so much on being a wife and being a good mom until even a lot of the hobbies and things I had before I got married, I just forgot about them. And Mm -hmm. it took me years to rediscover them. Mm -hmm. It was like, I didn't rediscover those things until my kids were grown. Okay. So, yeah, so I will tell um, any single person that to wear, hold on to your hobbies and try to remember those things and just, mm-hmm. and once you find true love, don't let those things go because I I think too, it will make you happier and mm-hmm. it also will bring value to you and your husband. I think that he will even enjoy you more because he know how valuable you are. And mm-hmm. because too, everything shouldn't be just about him. You Mm -hmm. need to have your own thing going on already. Right. And then um, another thing would be, you know, your husband was attracted to you for a reason. Mm -hmm. Um, So there was something that you were doing, um, something that maybe you were involved in, you know, the whole package. So you don't want to lose that package. You just want to enhance the package. That's true. (laughs) Yeah. Now, as we speak about balance, though, what would you say to the woman that is super busy and got so many things going on now how would that affect a marriage <laughs> i would say you have to drop some of that and just do what's important and let go some of every some of that other stuff because one thing about our society i notice now we feel like if you if you're not busy all the time mm-hmm. then you're not productive but that's mm-hmm. that's not what success is that may be successful to, to the world but not as Christians. And so I would say, you know, you should drop some of that stuff because once you become married, now you got to have some time. You got to have some time for him. You know, Mm -hmm. you got to have some time to try to build your relationship. Not just when you first get married, but this is a forever thing. So this is something that you're going to have to constantly do. So -hmm. you want to make sure that your schedule is not so full to where you don't have time to focus on him. Because right. he mm-hmm. will get jealous. Yes. <laughs> yes. Definitely will get jealous and mm-hmm. he will command his time. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I could see that causing some tension in the um, relationship, especially if the woman feels like, oh, I just have to do this. You know, I have to go to work and, you know, I'm, I have all these roles, whether it be church or whatever it may be and I have to fulfill them. Aren't they good things? Aren't you happy about that? And so it's not that, you know, he's upset because you're being this all around, you know, good person, but it's because he's not getting enough attention. (laughs) 
and you know the children as well they could be complaining about that as well you're right and, and it's just not fair it's not fair to him and it's not fair to your kids because like we had said before earlier is um life is all about balance you've got to learn how to find that balance in your career balance mm -hmm. in your marriage and balance as a mom mm -hmm. and i also believe you know there's a time um for everything mm -hmm. so while you may really want to pursue this new job you know but you know that there are going to be some time constraints and you may have to work some after hours um and you know this just might not be a good time a good season for you um in your life to pursue something like that especially if things are already um rocky in the relationship or if you're already struggling with time management um so I think that there definitely needs to be some thought and some consideration to balance, you know, taking up those conversations, even with your family to see, you know, do you think I'm spending too much time in this area? Um, would you like me to pull back this? Um, am I meeting your needs? You know, I think those types of talks are necessary sometimes. I think so too, because it's like, really when you look at your life, you have to evaluate what's more important, mm -hmm. you know, and, and when it comes down to your family, they should always be number one. And I can say this, it's like, one thing I am thankful for about my life is I know what it felt like to be a full-time wife and mom. And I also experienced what it felt like to be a career mom, mm -hmm. you know, and wife. And, and it's one of those things to where if I had to do it all over again, I would have just stayed at home and took care of my household because I look at my daughters and um, sometimes um, I missed out on some things because I was mm -hmm. into re retail management. So I had to work weird hours and most holidays I had to work. Mm -hmm. So if I had to do it all over again, I would have just stayed at home because that was more important. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Again, assessing, you know, your your values and what you have going on. And it may come to that where you have to maybe stay home or cut out some things so that you can be there for your family, because ultimately they need you and yeah. they are priority. So, yep, mm -hmm. that's a very good point. Thank you for tuning in to part one of my interview. Make sure you stay tuned for part two. If you like my message and what I share has been a blessing to you, you want to support me, I do accept monetary gifts. Plant a seed in my ministry. Whatever you donate will be appreciated. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the notification bell. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.